The hypothalamus is located in the diencephalon below the thalamus. That's what hypothalamus means, below thalamus. The hypothalamus is one of the primary autonomic control centers of our body. This is how we maintain control over many of the functions of our body that we don't have to think about, like blood pressure, testosterone or estrogen production, sperm or egg development, thirst control, hunger, cravings, metabolism, etc. In order to maintain homeostasis over so many different types of physiological processes, the hypothalamus receives many different types of information, blood pressure, hormone levels, electrolyte balance, etc. The analogy here is the Pentagon, where so much information from all over the world goes for processing. Once a particular parameter is considered to be out of homeostasis or out of balance, the hypothalamus then communicates with the pituitary gland to fix the problem or carry out an action. Like the Pentagon, after processing the input it receives, it then asks some form of the military to carry out, carry out the action. In this case, the pituitary gland does the work. The hypothalamus receives information from the body. Then its only action is to activate the pituitary gland to make any necessary changes. What is important here is to understand that the hypothalamus does not directly control any organ or tissue. It only controls the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland will then target the tissues or organs of the body. Find the diencephalon on the diagram. It looks a bit like a duck head with the eye representing the center of the thalamus. The hypothalamus is the beak portion. Looking more closely at the diagram, we can see the relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. The connection between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland is a stalk called the infundibulum. The pituitary gland is divided into two parts, the anterior and the posterior. The anterior pituitary is controlled by hormones released by the hypothalamus. The posterior pituitary is controlled by nerves coming from the hypothalamus. The hormones from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland th travel through a two capillary bed network called the hypophyseal portal system. The nerves that control the posterior pituitary gland have cell bodies within the hypothalamus and axon terminals in the posterior pituitary gland. There are two groups of hormones made by the hypothalamus to control the anterior pituitary gland. The family of releasing hormones are sent to the pituitary gland to release a particular hormone out to the body. The family of inhibiting hormones are sent from the pituitary gland to stop the anterior pituitary from releasing more of a particular hormone. The action from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary gland involved direct nerve control. This causes chemicals from the neuron to be released in the posterior pituitary gland, then sent out to the body. The hypothalamus is located in the diencephalon and it receives information from the body about autonomic functions. It controls the pituitary gl gland to cause an effect on the body. The pituitary control is through two pathways, releasing and inhibiting hormones through the hypophyseal portal system and direct nerve control to the posterior pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is located inferior to the hypothalamus. It is connected to the hypothalamus by a stalk called the infundibulum. The pituitary gland is also called the hypophysis, which means to grow beneath. The pituitary gland is encased by the cella tercica of the sphenoid bone. The posterior pituitary gland, or neurohypophysis, is controlled by nerve impulses from the hypothalamus. The anterior pituitary gland, or adenohypophysis, is controlled by hormones traveling from the hypothalamus through the hypophysial portal system. 
The anterior pituitary gland is also known as the adenohypophysis, where adeno means gland. The anterior pituitary gland contains many different cells to produce about six different hormones. On a slide, you can see a number of color variations indicating the many different cell types. The posterior pituitary gland is also known as the neurohypophysis, where neuro refers to the fact that it is made entirely of nerves or nerve endings. This exemplifies the direct neural connection between the posterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. On a slide, the posterior pituitary gland has a more uniform or plain appearance in comparison to the anterior pituitary gland. Let's begin by looking at some hormones produced from the posterior pituitary. Antidiuretic hormone targets the kidney tubules to retain water under conditions of dehydration or high solute or electrolyte concentration. The result of reduced water excretion is balanced electrolyte levels and increased blood volume. It acts as a don't pee hormone. Oxytocin is a powerful hormone that targets the smooth muscle, especially the uterus and milk ducts in the breast. It stimulates uterine contraction during labor, it stimulates milk ejection or letdown of milk, and plays a role in orgasm in both men and women. Other actions of oxytocin are not well defined. Now let's look at the hormones from the anterior pituitary gland. Thyroid stimulating hormone is released by the anterior pituitary gland and targets only the thyroid gland. The action on the thyroid gland is to release the thyroid hormones T3 and T4, which increase metabolism. The thyroid hormones T3 and T4 will be discussed in greater detail in the thyroid gland section. The stimulus sequence begins with the hypothalamus detecting low metabolism. The hypothalamus then sends out thyrotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary which then sends out thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone then travels throughout the body via the blood to finally act on its target, the thyroid gland. Adrenocorticotropic hormone does what the name says. Adreno indicates it's going to the adrenal gland. Cortico indicates indicates it is going to the cortex region to release corticosteroids and tropic indicates that it is a target specific to that area. Once adrenal corticotropic hormone targets the adrenal cortex, it will release a family of hormones called glucocorticoids. Cortisol is the main stress hormone in this family that we will focus on. The process begins when the hypothalamus detects a state of stress. The hypothalamus then sends out corticotropin releasing hormone through the hypophysial portal system to the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary then sends out adrenal corticotropic hormone throughout the body targeting the adrenal cortex. Luteinizing hormone is released by the anterior pituitary gland targeting the gonads, stimulating to release sex steroids. In women, luteinizing hormone targets the ovary to release estrogen, and a luteinizing hormone surge in mid-cycle will cause an egg to be released. In men, luteinizing hormone targets the testes to increase testosterone production. The hypothalamus detects circulating testosterone and estrogen levels. When these levels are low, the hypothalamus sends gonadotropin releasing hormone through the hypophysial portal system to the anterior pituitary gland. Luteinizing hormone is then released, targeting the gonads to increase sex steroid production. There are also a number of other hormones and reproductive factors that affect the hypothalamus control of this hormone that are beyond the scope of our course. Follicle-stimulating hormone is released by the anterior pituitary gland, again targeting the gonads. This stimulates gamete production. In women, Follicle-stimulating hormone targets the ovary to develop an egg for ovulation. In men, follicle-stimulating hormone targets the testes to increase and support sperm production. The hypothalamus regulates the gamete production cycle, which vary considerably from male to female, and will be discussed in greater detail in the reproductive system chapter. Prolactin 
is released by the anterior pituitary gland throughout the body and targeting breast tissue. Prolactin increases milk production in mammary glands in lactating women. Both men and women have prolactin, although the role of prolactin in men is not clearly defined. There are prolactin receptors all over the body and the role of this complex hormone outside of milk production is poorly understood. Growth hormone is released by the anterior pituitary gland and targets tissues all over the body. Its primary purpose is for skeletal growth in children at the epiphyseal plates as well as musculature. Increased protein synthesis as occurs with muscle or tissue building, increased lipid breakdown and mobilization of fatty acids and effects on insulin and blood glucose levels. When the hypothalamus initiates the release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland, it sends out growth hormone releasing hormone into the hypophyseal portal system. The pituitary gland then releases growth hormone. There is a surge of growth hormone release during deep sleep. The hypothalamus sends out either releasing or inhibiting hormones. The example here will use releasing. The releasing hormones or examples of are thyrotropin releasing hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, luteinizing releasing hormone, follicle stimulating releasing hormone, prolactin releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone. Notice they're all close to the hormone name just with the word releasing in it. When it says either releasing or inhibiting in the name, we know that it has come from the hypothalamus. These hormones go through the hypophyseal portal system to target the anterior pituitary. It is then the anterior pituitary that sends hormones out that will be distributed throughout the entire body. Let's go through each step by step. Let's start with thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. It targets the anterior pituitary which then sends out thyroid stimulating hormone to target the thyroid gland, which then increases growth and metabolism. Luteinizing releasing hormone will then target the anterior pituitary. That causes the release of luteinizing hormone, which targets the testes in men, ovaries in women. Follicle stimulating releasing hormone also targets the anterior pituitary, which in turn causes the anterior pituitary to send out follicle stimulating hormone, again targeting the testes in men and ovaries in women. The effects are either to increase sex hormone production, which is the role of luteinizing hormone, or to increase sperm or egg development, which is the role of follicle stimulating hormone. Prolactin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus targets the anterior pituitary causing it to release prolactin which targets breast tissue to increase milk production. Growth hormone releasing hormone targets the anterior pituitary causing it to release growth hormone which then is spread throughout the entire body to increase growth and cell division.